So the first system uh, that we're going to deal with is a pre-vegetated module, um, modular system, and has to be installed on the conventional membrane. Uh, modules are a quick and convenient way of installing a mature established green roof system for demanding clients. Uh, they range in growing media depth from about two and a half inches to eight inches, and they can be planted with just about any plant that's suitable for the, uh, the given media depth and for the climatic application. Uh, this can be sun or shade, uh, the height, and it can range from minimalist seed and plantings as what most of these uh, setups are. Or if you look in the back, there's a few there that, that are a little more esoteric plants. Uh, and you can go to lush shade gardens even. And th those are typically used on amenity spaces. And uh, the other thing you can go to is rooftop meadows. So modules typically arrive on site uh, completely vegetated and well established. Um, if those in, in modules, you can also add and subtract plants after the fact, but these, these are come in um, fully vegetated. So from an installation point of view, these are about as simple as it comes. Uh, modular green roof systems, um, it doesn't there's a system in each tray, regardless of whether you're installing one or 100,000. So it's a, a green roof system all in one. Everything is contained in the, in the module with the exception of the root barrier. I didn't print this large enough. <laughs> so um, installation is as simple as laying rooftop pavers when it comes to modules. In this particular case, if you want to hold one up, James, um, a green roof, these, these modules, it's as simple as an orange, there's an orange sticker on that indicates the direction, and you keep the green side up and you lay it down as if you're installing pavers. Removal is equally simple. You pry one out and um, you know, like you would in a patio. So the first one is the most difficult to come out after that. It's uh, straightforward. So the first step on a conventional roofing system is the root, uh, laying out the root barrier. You see that being laid out, deliberately blue just to make sure that you have a, uh, a good view of what it is. Typically these are sheets of either polypropylene or polyethylene and they range in thickness from 10 to 40 mils and uh, the thickness depends on the underlying roofing system and the requirements for that roofing system. Uh, these root berries are chemically inert so you don't have plasticizer reactions with the membranes. Um, that root barrier serves two purposes. On a conventional roof especially, the first purpose is to prevent the roots from getting down to the membrane. The second purpose is to prevent abrasion of the membrane during the installation process. The second uh, step is to lay out the vegetation free zone. So if you look at the back, there's a continuous vegetation free zone in the, uh, in the green roof system. That is a requirement um, under the green roof construction standard in Toronto and almost every roofing and vegetated roof manufacturer has that requirement. The primary function of that is, a, is as a fire break between the green roof and any combustible materials. Uh, secondary function is you can use, it, it can be emergency overflow during exceptionally severe storms and you can also use it to hide your irrigation pipes. The third step in the installation of uh, a uh, modular system is the installation of edging. So primarily you create a, a straight line edge uh, against which you start installing the, uh, the modules. So the, the edging basically splices together. And there's different ways that different manufacturers do this, but this is just one. And then uh, a corner. So where we want to terminate the green roof is a corner put in place. And we'll let James and Ian put a few uh, modules and some more edging in place.
Okay, so at this point, I wanted to point out how we deal with penetrations. So we have this gooseneck in the roof. Yes, it is loose laid here, but um, we put a box around the gooseneck to isolate it from the green roof. Uh, typically, that space gets filled in with uh, uh, some stone, uh, but it can, it can be left naked as well. So after installation of that box, we just continue on with installing the modules. And as you can see, these, these modules can be installed either uh, in straight rows or in a brick pattern uh, installation if you need to in this particular case to go around a one by one box. So one, one of the things uh, I wanted to point out, when vegetated roofs are installed, one of the things we often run into that there's still temporary work activity happening on the roof. And that can be really detrimental to the plants, especially if people are landing you know, metal on there, leaving it sitting on the roof, they're walking across it. Uh, I know there's a couple of maintenance people in the crowd here who have had that experience. Um, and the repairs of green roofs it can be you know, they're not necessarily the easiest thing to repair. Um, so the destruction of a, uh, a beautiful and healthy green roof can happen fairly quickly. Typically, in the past, those who have been conscientious enough have been using plywood. The problem with laying plywood on the green roof is you have to remove it at every couple hours or um, at least every day, because otherwise the plants underneath it simply die from lack of sunlight. So here's a, a way that you can deal with uh, temporary traffic. It's called a grass paver. It's actually used for lawns that are used as driveways. Um, but you can go on these and have temporary traffic on the green roof without detrimental effects. Now the other thing that Ian is showing here, this particular green roof system is e e equipped with what we call soil elevators. Uh, basically those are there during production and installation. They get removed during the installations. It allows everything to grow together. And even with, uh, with modular green roofs, it's very important that everything's allowed to grow together. So it shares nutrients and it shares uh, resources across the, uh, the plants. And it also improves wind uplift resistance when they grow together. So once the installation is complete, all that's needed is a good watering. We're not going to do that here. The vegetated roof can then be, the modular roof can then be left alone for several weeks before it needs to be watered again. The client has an instant green roof uh, and they get what they paid for. So I'm going to hand it over to Sasha now who is going to walk us through a thin layer system. I'm going to move this, sorry. It took a little longer than expected. Okay, so like the previous demo, this middle section here is also going to be a pre-grown system, uh, pre-grown extensive system. There are, however, some significant differences. Firstly, because we wanted to show you a wide variety, this is uh, a green roof on top of an inverted roofing assembly. So you've got the insulation above the, the roofing membrane. Um, and secondly, because the insulation is exposed, the stone ballast is required to weigh down that insulation. Now this system is called a soilless system because there is no loose growing medium 
above the mat, or sorry, below the mat. It's one of the thinnest profiled systems on the market today. The whole system is only two inches thick and weighs about 14 pounds fully saturated. It has a water retention of 43 liters per square meter, so it's quite high. Uh, and the system has a couple innovative features. So first, the plants have been grown outdoors ahead of time, and they're transported to the roof fully grown, as you see them now. Uh, and that's to provide instant green. And second, it uses a high-performance water retention layer to capture rainwater instead of thick, heavy growing media. Because of its lightweight nature, the pre-grown mat system is particularly well-suited to um, existing roofs, so retrofits, or industrial buildings, for example. So let's start at the bottom of the um, green roof assembly, bottom of the roofing assembly, with the root barrier. So like the blue plastic layer that you see here, uh, this black layer does essentially the same thing. Um, before the insulation is installed, the root barrier must be installed in an inverted roofing assembly. The root barrier is 20 mil thick. It's made of low density polyethylene and it comes in really large rolls because you want to minimize the number of seams on a roof. So the roll is 13 feet wide and 82 feet long. It's flexible even at low temperatures, so it allows for good handling and easy cutting. Um, the root barrier is installed all over the roof, so parapet to parapet, underneath the vegetated system. It's overlapped 12 inches, and it's not typically uh, seamed, sealed in any way. Uh, not for extensive roofs anyhow, because the plants have very shallow roots. The root barrier cannot be placed above the insulation. You may be thinking, why is it all the way down there? Why isn't it higher up? It cannot be placed above the insulation, and that's because the root barrier is non-breathable. So therefore, it would prevent water from evaporating back into the atmosphere as it normally would do in an inverted roof. And this creates an opportunity for water vapor to get stuck and be driven into the insulation, which would then reduce the R value, and we don't want to do that. So there is a bulletin by an extruded um, insulation manufacturer, and we can tell you where to find that if you'd like to, to, to read up on that. So the roofing components, after the root barrier, we've got your insulation, and then the filter fabric. That's just like your typical filter fabric. And then your stone ballast. So in this demo, the stones have a dual function. Uh, they, number one, weigh down the insulation, as I mentioned, and secondly, they act as the drainage layer for the vegetated roof system. So the drainage layer, the stones provide an open space that water can flow through and go towards the roof drains. Uh, it also has a side benefit, which I'd really like to emphasize here. Once the stone ballast is installed on an inverted roof, the roofing assembly is complete. Roofing contractors can walk away. The green roof doesn't have to be rushed in to weigh down the insulation. The, the green roof can be installed when the weather is, is better or when all the roofing work has been completed, which means that you don't have foot traffic happening over top of your plants. Um, when an inverted roof uses the green roof to weigh it down, careful planning is required just to make sure that multiple trades aren't working at the same time on the roof level and damaging the plants. So on top of the drainage layer, uh, sorry, on top of the stones, which act as the drainage layer, now we have the mineral wool, which is going to be installed. As you can see here in this roll, it comes in a bag. It's individually bagged. The mineral wool is um, a lightweight product. It's made of 100% pure melted rock. And it's needled together to form a blanket, free of any binders or coatings. It comes in a one meter width, and it's five meters long. This mineral wool will be loose laid on top of the stones, and it can be easily cut with scissors or with a utility knife and it would be cut leaving a setback away from any uh, drains or penetrations. You would basically install the needled mineral wool where you're going to be installing the plants. If the plants are not found around a roof drain, 
then you don't want this material around there either because this will encourage plants to grow. So if you don't want the plants to grow around the drain, which we don't want, we don't install this immediately around the roof drain. The main function of this one inch needled mineral wool is to retain water and nutrients, which will be accessed by the plants as the roots grow quickly into this layer. This water retention layer is, is used because it's quite efficient, really efficient at retaining water, more so than growing medium on a per unit weight basis. For example, the needle mineral wool can retain 25 liters of water per square meter, which is almost triple the amount of water retained by one inch of growing medium. And yet, saturated min mineral wool is still about 10% lighter than growing medium. So additional water retention layers can also be incorporated um, into this type of assembly. There are different materials like a fleece component that can be installed in addition to this, or two layers of the mineral wool can also be used. There are different thicknesses of mineral wool. So things can be mixed and matched depending on the kind of water retention that you're, that you're looking for. And it's really important to note that when the mineral wool is uh, finished, just like in a growing medium type um, system, it needs to be fully saturated because once the plants are installed on top, they need to feel that nice, moist area so their roots can grow into that. And watering this type of layer, as I mentioned, it holds 25 liters per square meter. It can hold a lot of water. So getting water on this immediately is really important so that one section is fully watered and the plants could be installed on that as the rest of the sections are being laid out. I've seen cases where the green roof installation sort of comes to a halt because we're waiting for the guy to water and maybe there's just a little bit of water coming off the hose. So watering is definitely important uh, on a roof. This would be fully, fully saturated. And after this component, we've got our vegetation mats. So the vegetation mats come in, in rolls or in sheets. They can be custom cut. Typically, they are two meters long, but they could also be one meter only or a longer length. So as you can see, the vegetation mat is a thin profile. It's about an inch thickness, and it simply rolls out just like that on top of the mineral wool. The next piece would be abutted very tightly up to the first piece. You want to make sure that those seams are really nice and tight, very similar to sod. And it's important to note that since there is no loose growing medium, the, the mats can just abut directly to um, the edge or you can see around the drain at the end there is no edging so the edging that you see here the bronze one or the metal one those are needed to hold in soil in this system we don't need it and the drain is um, it's basically just naked there is no edging around the drain and uh, budding up to the to the plants back there yeah so the second row of uh, seda mats would be placed on top of the first row on top of this overlap, you see this little gray flap that's sticking out beyond the, the first row of seda mats here. The next row would be placed on top of that overlap. Seda mats are guaranteed to have about 85% vegetation coverage right from day one, so you achieve that instant green. The mats are unrolled and uh, fitted to the edge of the roof. And as you'll see in a little bit, you can fold it over and cut it from the back. Cutting from the back of the mat makes a much cleaner cut. You don't have plants and bits of growing medium flying at you. The back can also be, be marked. So if you had a two by four needed to mark a straight line, you could mark it up back there. It's um, a fabric on the back of the mats so it can be marked up with a marker, as I mentioned. Now, the mats can be cut in several ways. Uh, an angle grinder is probably the, the, the fastest way to cut. Um, you can also use utility knives, as the installers are doing here now. I know. 
And the next piece would basically be reused and fit into this area here, the part that's missing. And once that's done, basically the last step is to do the, the manicuring that we call. So just touching up, making sure everything is tucked in nicely. Of course, then there's watering that's required on top of the mats, fully, fully watering them so the whole system is really nice and wet. And the last part would be the stone ballast into the drains. Perfect, thank you guys. Good. So the stone ballast is filled in around the roof drains, any penetrations, if you had a gooseneck, um, a pipe, filled up to the height of the plants. We want to make sure that the edge of the plants are really nice and covered. So as you can see here, all the various components are engineered to function as a system. When it rains, the seed mat absorbs the water, then the excess percolates to the mineral wool, and it also absorbs the water and feeds the plants for later use, and the rest of the water will drain through the stones and go down into the roof drains. And that's a completed thin layer mat installation. Now I'll turn it over to Yale, who will do a built-up roof on uh, inverted roofing system. Well, I was told that we are running out of time a little bit, so I, I'm not going to go into the whole uh, roofing system. It's uh, similar to what uh, Sasha has shown. With, it's going to be an inverted roof with a root barrier, insulation, and a scrim sheet on top. So I'm uh, representing the build-in-place demonstration. Uh, build-in-place vegetated roof systems are the classical and most common vegetated roof system on the market. And they have a long history for over 40 years worldwide. Uh, build in place means that the vegetated roof is assembled on site layer by layer uh, to accommodate the roof for what it is intended to be. Uh, their unique, unique, compact, and layered design creates a clear separation between uh, membrane protection, drainage function, and growing function. So they are uh, engineered and designed to give the vegetation optimal growing conditions without uh, relying heavily on irrigation and fertilizing. Uh, there are uninterrupted drainage layers and engineered growing medium and they are the success of a build-in-place system. So the build-in-place system are uh, easy to install without the use of heavy tools. Uh, all layers are easy to cut with a utility knife and each product is sized for ease of manual installation. So the layered approach of the build-in-place system also allows the installation of the faded vegetated roof system in phases, so similar to what Sasha was saying. So what that means is that certain layers can be installed later in the building process to avoid damage to the vegetation. So for example, on an inverted roof, quite often uh, a ballast is used to keep the insulation down. So to, um, to prevent damage to the vegetation, the green roof actually can be used as ballast, so we don't, we don't require any gravel underneath our uh, green roof system. We use the soil of the green roof system as ballast, and then all the trays can come in to, uh, to do the rest of the work and then the vegetation is uh, installed later in the, in the process. So uh, build-in-place systems are uh, often using off-the-shelf components and uh, efficient ways of packaging, so this makes them ready available, easy to transport and hoist it to the roof. Uh, the build-in-place system that is demonstrated here is a low-maintenance, extensive green roof. The assembly depth is around three to four inches deep and the weight is about 20 pounds per square foot saturated. Uh, and it will retain about 45 liters per square meter. Now, first of all, we have the root barrier underneath the insulation, uh, rigid insulation on top and a scrim sheet. Uh, on top of the scrim sheet, we have uh, a, a drainage layer. Uh, the drainage layer is designed and engineered to facilitate uninterrupted drainage of water to the roof drains. Uh, it often has uh, cups in it, so that can retain water uh, from, from the rain, and that can be used for the vegetation in the drier periods. It's also designed for airflow to the green roof system and also provide air to the root zone. Uh, often it's made from recycled materials. Uh, and there are many different types of drainage layers available, different thicknesses with different water retention capacities and uh, compressive strengths. 
They're easy to install. In this case, it's a roll with the filter sheet attached. You just roll it out. Uh, easy to cut with a utility knife. Um, and they also can available in sheets and et cetera, so it's really easy to install. Uh, then we have a filter sheet on top, so that's keeping this, the, the fines from the soil out of the drainage layer, uh, so it's not plugging up. It's made of a non-woven uh, fabric to keep the grow medium out of the drainage layer below. Uh, it's parallel to water. Uh, it can come in separate rolls. Uh, in this case, it's attached to the drainage board. Now, then we have the grow medium. It's uh, often called the engine of the green roof, of the vegetated roof, or the carrier of the vegetation. So it's an engineered grow medium, so it's not normal soil. Uh, it's engineered to suit uh, biological needs of the fire, uh, vegetation, so it gives uh, water and nutrients to the plants. Uh, so this reduces the use of uh, fertilizing and irrigation. It's also engineered to provide uh, required physical uh, parameters, such as weight and wind resistant, and also stormwater retention and fire. Um, this particular grow medium is uh, made from recycled mir uh, minerals, as well as uh, organic ingredients. The percentage of organics is determined by the type of plants that you want to grow. Um, if you have too much organic in there, uh, organic will decompose in time and then your layer of grow medium will shrink and exposing the roots of the vegetation. Um, also, a lot of organic is a lot of nutrients, so you're going to have a lot of wheat growth into the, uh, the green roof system and then your maintenance costs are uh, up, up to the roof. So the grow medium is it's coming in bulk or in big bags, so we can actually bring it up to the roof with the blower truck. Uh, that's a big truck with a pump and a hose and we can pump it up 15 stories high. Uh, or it can be craned up um, in, in the big bags. Now the next step is the vegetation. Uh, that's the visible part of the vegetated roof. It's chosen to suit the growing conditions like grow medium depth and local climatic conditions as well as the design intent. Uh, for the extensive, as you see here, roof, uh, there are a couple of methods to plant. It can vary from uh, small plug plants to uh, pre-grown mats. Uh, the mats are, are pre-grown mostly with sedum species and rolled out just like a sod and then you have an instant green roof right from the beginning. Another option is using individual little plug plants and then we plant about 20 till 25 plugs per square meter. Uh, the, the advantage of the option is that you also can choose other varieties, so not only sedums but also some grasses and other perennials so you have a little bit more height. Um, and it is a more cost effective way of uh, installing a green roof. Um, the, uh, it takes about two growing seasons with those plugs to get the uh, same coverage as with the seed and mats. Now then we have the vegetated free zone that uh, Case also talked about for fire resistant as well as, uh, as drainage. Um, in our case we use a river rock, a rout stone, uh, and that can be separated from the grow medium by a steel edging. And you see the sample of the steel edging also on both sides of the demo as well. Okay, then I want to show you a sloped green roof application as well. So a sloped green roof starts from uh, 10 degrees and up. I'm going to stand here in the middle. And there are three critical um, elements for a sloped vegetated roof. So the first critical element are shear forces. So the entire system wants to slide down to the lowest point of the green roof. So to counter the shear forces, shear barriers need to be installed at the fascia as well as intermediate. If the roof is really long and you have a lot of weight sitting on the parapet at the bottom, then you want to have a shear barrier halfway as well. So there are two types. One, you can do it with wood blocking, creating little curbs on the roof, or you can do it with a steel edge that is perforated. And then we have support brackets, as you can see there at the bottom of the roof, to uh, make that strong enough to hold the weight. Uh, other systems are using a, a cable or a netting structure that is fastened to the top of the roof. So those brackets, they need to be waterproofed in. 
Uh, another critical element is soil retention. So that is only the soil that wanna erode or slide down to the lowest point of the roof. So to prevent soil from sliding down, uh, anti-erosion measures need to be in place to uh, keep everything on the roof. And then the third critical element is uh, drainage. So if water that falls on the roof, it will all collect at the bottom of the roof. So we have to make sure that it is drained off really fast. So how does it work? So first of all, we want to recommend uh, a root protected waterproofing membrane. If we have used to use those similar uh, root barriers that you see on the flat roof on a slope, it's really slippery and it's really hard to work on that. So we recommend a root protected waterproofing membrane. Uh, also, the roof cannot be installed on shingles. There are too many seams in the shingles and roofs can penetrate in that. So a root protected waterproofing membrane is preferable. So first of all, we install a, a moisture retention mat. So on the bottom, we have the shear barrier. Then we have a moisture retention mat. So that's um, a filthy mat that is uh, retaining water, but it's also protecting the waterproofing membrane against mechanical damage. So it comes in uh, rolls of two meter wide and 15 meters in length, and it's easy to cut with a utility knife. Uh, we recommend to bring it also on the vertical parts of the green roof to protect the waterproofing there as well. So the next step is uh, anti-erosion elements. So this is a diamond-shaped raster element. Uh, as you can see, there is a bar in the middle that has to be in the direction of the shear forces. It's designed for that. And it has connectors on the four sides, so you can click those rasters into each other to uh, make a complete grid. Um, so it's really engineered to uh, counterforce those shear forces. We can go up till 45 degrees, like a 12-12 pitch. And they are designed to secure the grow medium onto the roof. And uh, those ones are easy to install and easy to cut with a, with a handsaw. So just to stop and then you do this one like that. Another one. Okay, now there's another one there. So it's the first time that they install it, so I need some assistance. So then we have the, the grow medium. It's a similar grow medium as you see on the, on the flat roof application. And that will be installed in the various compartments of the, um, of the geo raster. So once that is completed, uh, the green roof can be planted. And again, that can be done by uh, pre-grown vegetation mats that can be laid on top of that or with uh, individual plug plants. Uh, if you want to use plug plants, we recommend a higher density of plug plants so it can grow in faster uh, because you want to have everything enclosed as quickly as possible to avoid uh, erosion of the grow medium. So we're at the end of the green roof demonstration. If you have any specific questions uh, about the systems, uh, the various fenders of the green roof, the manufacturers are mentioned on that board over there. Um, and now we have about five minutes for uh, some general questions. Uh, it was also asked to uh, point you to the demonstration outside as well. So uh, it's recommended for us also. So are there any questions?